Good evening. I'm uh, John Pierce, uh, the Dean of Environment at Simon Fraser University, and it's a genuine pleasure to welcome you to the six-part seminar series on the demography of seven billion, patterns, processes, and uh, prognoses. Uh, this is a series that attempts to address these issues from a plurality of perspectives uh, and interests, including uh, obviously economic, uh, demographic, uh, political, biological, moral, and uh, ecological. Uh, there will be five internationally known uh, speakers from now until March the uh, 7th, and then on the uh, March the 14th, the series will conclude with an open interactive session uh, where you can actively participate. And uh, before Arna Moores introduces our inaugural speaker, let me thank our sponsors. First of all, the David and Cecilia Ting uh, Endowment Fund, the Faculties of uh, uh, Environment and Science, and the Human Evolutionary Studies Program at SFU. And I just want to say a few things about this exciting program, and then I want to provide very briefly a, a little bit of context for... Um, the, uh, the lecture series. Um, with respect to this particular program and within the framework of evolutionary theory, um, this program has created a team of, uh, of academics and students from the humanities, natural and uh, social sciences to forge new collaborative and interdisciplinary research ties within and outside uh, Simon Fraser University uh, to answer some uh, fundamental questions relating to the human condition. And what better fundamental question uh, facing humanity today than the sustainability of existing population, of uh, future population growth, the consumption associated uh, with that population, and of course environmental integrity. Uh, we need to remind ourselves that as one paleoanthropologist has suggested that early humans may have evolved to become, to become uniquely adapted to adapt eventually exploiting local environments beyond long-term sustainable levels. Does this mean that even given all of our technological sophistication that we could face a similar fate? Without a doubt, we are facing increasingly complex relationships where action and effects become blurred, particularly because social and ecological systems at various scales are becoming more and more integrated. In the case of population alone, Populations are not homogeneous, but highly variable in terms of fertility, net growth rates, as we will hear, in age structures, and particularly in, in longevity, as we will hear uh, this evening, in distribution between, of course, urban and rural, in migration rates, and, of course, in human well-being broadly defined. And in the case of protecting environment, we only have, and it is kind of embarrassing to say this, a rudimentary understanding of how to incorporate uh, the value of ecological services uh, into economic decision making. The range of expert opinion on the gravity of the situation is uh, not, uh, not surprising, considerable here. And for example, a number of economists have adopted a highly optimistic view of the merits of population growth based upon an assumption in the continued growth of uh, scientific and technological progress from a larger population base. And certainly under this scenario, humans are seen as the ultimate resource, and resource scarcity and limits to growth recede into an ever-expanding future of inventiveness. Others are cautiously optimistic, including uh, uh, demographers and uh, development, uh, developmental economists, who see great potential in reaching the United Nations medium projections by 2050 of 9 billion, by accelerating the demographic transition through a variety of means, including lowering total fertility rates with ambitious uh, educational, health, and development goals. And within the, uh, the last scenario, I just want to touch on here, within this third scenario, there's a significant group of ecological, biological scientists who have adopted a much more pessimistic perspective for them, current population levels are already exceeding carrying capacities in most regions of the world. And it is argued that our ecological footprint is in excess of the equivalent of two Earths, and that development inequities are becoming increasingly pro problematic for humans and environment alike. So on behalf of uh, SFU, uh, the faculties of uh, 
environment and science. I hope you uh, are able to take in as much of this series as possible and uh, that you're able to uh, join us on March the 14th for a highly interactive session. So enjoy the series. Thank you, Arnes. Good evening, everyone. Um, how many of you were here for the Darwin and You series a couple of years ago? Anybody? All right, so that one was fun. This one is very, very serious. <laughs> so I want to um, sort of echo Dean Pierce's comments and, and, and sort of, um, we had a little quiz at the end of the Darwin and You series a couple of years ago. And uh, this time, this is going, also going to be like an advanced graduate class. So you should all come and take notes and then come on the 14th um, when we're going to try to actually disentangle some of these uh, viewpoints and, and see where we get. And I think it, you'll see Dean Pierce presented these three different sort of broad perspectives of what's going on, and we will have speakers um, speaking to all three of those perspectives. So um, our guest tonight, our, the first speaker, I think is a perfect opening speaker for a series titled Seven Billion and You for the simple fact that uh, this seven billion estimation projection um, actually flows directly from his work. So uh, Dr. Sanderson uh, is not just a commentator on world population, he's actually the creator of those population estimates. Um, so we actually may have him to blame for your, your, you sitting here tonight wondering what's going on with seven billion people. Uh, he's also a professor of economics and professor of history at uh, the State University of New, uh, of New York at Stony Brook on Long Island. Um, he's had an illustrious career there and at Stanford and he's had stints at Princeton and at the National, what's it called, the uh, National Bureau of Economic Research and the World Bank, and at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis in Austria, where um, he's a permanent fellow and where, with Wolfgang Lutz, he has done much of the uh, research that he's going to share with us tonight. So I think it's a, a real honor and a pleasure that he could open up this series, and I ask you to help me in welcoming him. Thank you. 